Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Weekend as we remember and celebrate all the saints in our lives, both those who have entered into their eternal rest and those who walk among us. This morning, these candles remind us of the 51 saints who have uh, entered into God's rest this year from this congregation. So we remember them today and this All Saints weekend. Uh, the lights remind us that in our baptism, uh, we were handed a candle. And in that candle, we heard these words, let your light so shine before others that they may glorify your Father in heaven. So these lights remind us of God's light within us who brings glory and honor to God. Again, welcome to worship. My name is Mike Sagan. I'm one of the pastors here at Desert Hills. We have Pastor Craig over here who will be uh, presiding at communion this morning. So make sure you welcome him and his wife, Suzanne, as they begin this journey with us. Again, if this is your first time worshiping with us, it's a pleasure to have you with us. If you are one of the many who are starting to come back uh, from usually up north somewhere, uh, welcome back to Desert Hills. And if this is part of your routine, welcome to worship, whether here in sanctuary or online, it's a joy and pleasure to have you in worship. One of the things that we do when we gather for worship is we remind ourselves and the world what we believe God is calling us to be about here at Desert Hills. So I invite you, whether here in Sanctuary or online, to join me in our mission statement. Here at Desert Hills Luther Church, we celebrate grace. We make disciples who make a difference. May it be so among us this day. Some announcements for the weeks ahead. Uh, first of all, just want to remind you about our stewardship luncheons and dinners. Um, there will, there's going to be one this afternoon, but you would need to have made a reservation for that so we know we have enough food. But you have two more opportunities coming up. There is going to be one available on Thursday, November 10th at 6.15 p.m. And then Wednesday, November 16th at 12.15 PM. So we encourage you, if you'd like, uh, to join us in one of those stewardship luncheons and dinners in the next couple of weeks. You should have received a packet in the mail. If you did not receive a packet in the mail, there are some packets by the church office. Please pick one up and make sure that if you'd like to come to one of the meals, that you turn in your registration card. On Saturday, November 12th, ladies, I'll have you come up. You can see these beautiful quilts, aprons, and other handbags and other items that uh, the women have made for their annual fall boutique. It will be in the Fellowship Hall again on November 12th. It's a Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you can also purchase items uh, after each service, either on Saturday or Sunday. So I invite you to do your Christmas shopping there. Um, just want to let you know that all the proceeds from the sale uh, is distributed. They don't keep any of the money uh, to cover costs. It all goes to three different organizations this year. The first one is St. Andrew's Children's Clinic. The other one is Valley Assistance. And the third one is Habitat for Humanities for Veterans. So uh, please support that ministry and, and you can pick up a beautiful item uh, that the ladies have been working on this year. So thank you for showing those beautiful items. The Health and Wellness will be hosting a happy, healthy holiday uh, seminar on November 18th at 9 a.m. As we know, we are entering into the holiday seasons, and sometimes we are tempted to eat things that maybe we shouldn't. Uh, so uh, here's a way to enjoy the holiday season and maybe feel a little bit healthier come January. So that will be, again, on November 18th at 9 a.m. On Sunday, November 20th, Chaplain Mark will be leading a one-day session on surviving the holidays. It will be at 2 p.m. We know, again, that there is a lot of stress and, and sometimes uh, loneliness and sadness during the holiday seasons, grieving and other things. That sometimes we just need some tools to help us survive all the busyness of the season. Here's a great opportunity on November 20th. If you can't make that one, Pastor, oh, Chaplain Mark will be holding, a, holding another session on Sunday, December 11th, again at 2 p.m. Thanksgiving di uh, dinner tickets are still available at the church office. They are $15 per person. The, the uh, meal will be on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day at 1 p.m. You do need to purchase a ticket. It will be a dine-in only. So if you're interested, please pick up your tickets uh, as soon as possible. And finally, again, this is All Saints Weekend, and at this time, uh, anytime during the service, I've seen a number of you have, you can place a carnation 
in uh, one of the two vases in memory and honor of, of a saint who has gone before us. You also during this service will be having a video in remembrance of the 51 saints who have now entered into their eternal rest. And during that time, we also encourage you to come up if you so desire and place a flower in one of the two vases. Again, we do this uh, in remembrance of the saints who have lived and died in the hope and promises of eternal life. At this time, as we begin our worship together, let's begin with an opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, may we experience your presence and peace this day, whether we're in the sanctuary or online. May we know of your love and grace. If this is the first time we have been here, may we know that we are welcomed by you. If we are returning back to this community, we're thankful for their return and that they made it safely. We look forward to walking with them in the months ahead. If this is part of who we are each week, may we just know of your love and grace in our lives. As, as the music uplifts us, as your word inspires us, as your spirit encourages us to move forward into this new life we have in you. On this All Saints Sunday, as we celebrate and remember, give us peace and comfort. Especially those who grieve this year of one they love, but now is in your care. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. I invite you to please stand if you're able for our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. 
and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. God, our eternal Redeemer, by the presence of your Spirit, you renew and direct our hearts. Keep always in our mind the end of all things and the day of judgment. Inspire us for a holy life here and bring us to the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too 
God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have obtained. The word of the Lord. Today's second reading is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. God's grace and peace to you on this day. As we do remember the saints who have gone before us, but even more we remember God's promises, the power of the resurrection, which gives us hope and peace this day. 
Amen. We are continuing our series on the journey, No One Walks Alone. This is the third week in the series, and this week we're talking about what lies ahead. But we began with remembering where we came from. We heard the stories of calls throughout Scripture about how God called individuals and communities to move forward. Last week we talked about how we're not there yet. That the kingdom of God is not fully realized among us. So there continues to be work to be done. And today we're imagining what lies ahead. And what lies ahead is really encompassed in All Saints Sunday. Because this weekend, we don't only just remember those saints who have gone before us. We are reminded that we are called saints of God. That's how scripture describes anyone who believes and trusts in the promises of Jesus. We are saints, beloved, a royal priesthood. But we are also reminded that not only are we saints, but there are saints yet to come. That this calling of what lies ahead is about the saints who do not yet understand who they are. That we press on, as Paul tells us. We press on forward because there are saints yet to be realized. And in fact, that's what we gather around today is this remembrance of the faithful who have endured life in order for us to be here today. If you look in 1 Kings chapter 3, in 1 Kings chapter 3, King Solomon is grieving. He's grieving because his father David is dead. And he's crying out to God about what has happened and the pain of his grief. And we're told... That God responds to Solomon by reminding Solomon that his father was unique. His father was the only one to ever be like him. But God goes on and says, every individual is unique in God's plan. Each one is created unique. There will never be another. But celebrate, God says. That they are now in my care. And today we remember the 51 saints of this community who have gone to God's care. But we also remember all the saints in our lives. Those of the past, those of the present, and those yet to come. And we are reminded, as Solomon was, that each and every individual is uniquely made. In the readings from Hebrews this morning, the writer of Hebrews is writing to a church that's struggling. It's struggling because it thought that Jesus was coming back. It's struggling because it's losing members of their community. They're facing persecution and they're tired and they're wondering, should we continue to go? They're tired and fatigued. And the writer of Hebrews is encouraging them that there is a great cloud of witnesses. Encouraging them to move forward. Giving them the strength to endure what life may bring. That their lives are an example for us to live a faithful life. I must tell you, when I gather with families at times when we were planning the celebration of life or funeral service of an individual, there's a part of me that gets jealous. And the reason why I get jealous is I begin to hear their amazing story. I hear about their lives and where they started and how they struggled and how they rose above different things and how they persevered about their compassion about their kindness. I hear story after story about individuals opening their lives and hearts to other individuals. 
I hear about the sacrifices they made for family and friends. I hear their commitment to a faith community. I hear their favorite scripture and songs that spoke to them. And there's a part of me at times that feels jealous. I wish I had known them then. I wish I could experience that with them because that's such an amazing story. And it always gives me pause as I reflect on my own life. It gives me encouragement to know that whatever comes my way, God will give me the strength like God gave them the strength to keep moving forward. To persevere. To run the race. Not only for my sake... But for their sake, for the sacrifices they've made, for their commitment to the faith that they wanted to pass on to us. And not only for the saints in the past, but the saints yet to come. That my life gets to join that great cloud of witnesses that I will at one day get to encourage the next generations of saints. So that they too can hear how God has been faithful throughout my life, our lives. There's a scene in a movie called The Dead Poet Society. You may have seen it. It's a, uh, it was a movie at one time, and Robin, Robin Williams was one of the main characters, and he was a teacher, brand new teacher at a prep school, a boys' prep school in New England. And he gathers these young men, these young men who come from very uh, wealthy and powerful families. These young men who have great dreams and hopes about their lives. And he gathers them around the front of the school. And there at the front of the school they have images and pictures and trophies and all the things that past students have done. And he has one of the students read the first line of a poem. And in this poem it says, gather the rosebuds while you can. And he asks the students, so what do you think that means? And one of them goes, well, it means the poet was busy, wanted to get it done. And Robin Williams says, no, that's not what it means. It means that today is the day you have to live. Today is the day you gather. And the rosebuds today will not be here tomorrow. And he has these young men lean into these photographs of these individuals that are no longer walking the earth. And he tells them, look into their eyes. And he says, these young men have the same dreams that you have. (laughs) These young men have the same hopes that you have. And these young men, he says, are speaking to you. Carpe diem. Seize the day. And as he's having these young men lean in, he starts to whisper behind them, seize the day. Seize the day. And he says, that's what these men would be saying to you today. And sisters and brothers in Christ, that's what the great cloud of witnesses is proclaiming to us today on this All Saints Day. That they're encouraging us to keep running the race. To keep moving forward. To allow their lives to be a witness and encouragement for us. But also to remember that we are to be an encourager for the others yet to come. That today we live. Today we trust. Even in the midst of the struggle of life. Just like the people in the book of Hebrews. Despite all that we're facing. We are encouraged by God to know that God continues to be faithful. God continues to call us. Leading us forward. Calling us to move into what is yet to lie ahead of us. But we go with the confidence and the promise of God. Just like we place our beloved into those same promises. We place our future into that same promise. That we will never be abandoned. We will never be alone. 
And today is the day that we seize to proclaim and to live this life of faith, this life of promise, to live gracious, compassionate, forgiving lives, to witness to what God has done for us in the world. And today we celebrate that. We celebrate the faithful who has given us the strength to be here today. So if you would like to grow, go a little deeper in today's text, I invite you to think about this. Reflect on how, in your, on your life, how you have seen growth in your own journey of faith. How have you been changed by God's grace? But most importantly, remember that you are uniquely made. You are made for a purpose of God's plan for the salvation of the world. And that God calls you to live this day. This day in the promises and hope of the resurrection. And the presence of God always in your life. Seize the day. For today is a day that God calls us to be faithful and a witness to God's love. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now have the gathering of offerings.
In the waters of baptism, we were baptized into Christ Jesus' death. So we, if we were baptized into a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So today, we remember. We remember the saints who have gone before us, but we remember more boldly the promises of God. That in the waters of baptism... We hear God's promise of new life, of the resurrected life. And so in the midst of our grief, we have hope and we have peace. Again, we'll be watching a video of all the saints this past year who have entered into eternal rest with God. Again, I encourage you, if you so desire, to come forward and place a carnation in one of the two vases. But let us remember those saints of this congregation who have entered into God's care.
On this All Saints weekend, let us reflect on words from Revelation chapter 21. I heard a loud voice speaking from the throne. Now God's home is with people. He will live with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and he will be their God. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more grief or crying or pain. The old things have disappeared. Please pray with me. Lord, we continue to offer our thanks, prayers, and gifts of time, talent, and treasure for your mission in the world to bring good news, help, and hope for all people. Lord, in your mercy. New to our prayer list are Charlie Anderson and Sandy Cochin. Leaving the prayer list with thanksgiving for healing are Lynn Bychurch, Miriam Burt, and Bonnie Byler. We take time now to silently pray for those who remain on our prayer list, as well as for others in our hearts and for situations in our lives. God of tenderness, we give thanks for all who have died in faith. Console our mourning spirits with the promise of eternal life in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, God of hope, we pray for the elections taking place this week. May the transition of power be peaceful, and may we as your people Pray for all elected officials, that they might serve the needs of the people and respect others who serve with them. Lord, in your mercy. God of tumult, you sustain and guide your people when the way forward is uncertain. We continue to cry out for the people of Ukraine as they experience the ravages of war. Abide with all people throughout the world who are going through difficult circumstances and reassure them of your constancy and presence, even in times of uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, God of togetherness, deepen the relationships that are built in this place. Form us as a community where tears of sorrow and shouts of joy can both be shared. Lord, in your mercy, accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Please stand as we hear the promise that comes from God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we come and receive that promise from God. Please stand for the blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we have been called and now sent. Sent into a future that is sure, because it is God's future. We go with courage and faith. There is nothing to fear, for God walks with us. Ahead of us, behind us, above and below us. We belong to God. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. On the journey, no one walks alone. We walk together with God. Amen. Amen.